Hello, housemates, and welcome to the Smoldering Corpse Bar in the city of Sigil. We are playing, once again, Planescape Torment. I'm Leapy, and let's uh, talk to some folks. Let's see, we have Ebb Creekness. All these people have, have just, like, names. It means they're going to be fun to talk to. Oh, look at it all. All right, let's talk to Dakon. The man before you is old. His dry, yellow skin has the scars of one who has traveled everywhere and never rested long in one place. His pinched face is inhumanly angular, and his ears sweep out from his skull, tapering to points. He wears a loose-fitting orange tunic, and a strange, shimmering blade is strapped across his back. The blade looks to be a two-pronged glaive made of some metal whose surface swirls like the film of oil in a pond. Greetings. The man turns to you, his eyes like polished coal. He stares through you, and for a moment you wonder if he might be blind. The weapon suddenly turns a dead, flat black, mirroring the man's eyes. Are you all right? Pale traveler. He says nothing for a moment, merely searches your face with his eyes. Hail, traveler. His voice is quiet and somber, like a wind whispering through the branches of a great tree. Hail. Your eyes are the weight of one who has traveled far to be in this place. He says the thing that he just said. Uh, so, the guy who does the voice acting for um, Dakon here is Mitch Pelegi, who is the actor who plays assistant director Skinner in the X-Files TV series, amongst other things. The man meets your gaze, his eyes burrowing into yours. His weapon drains of its black color, resuming its shimmering you noticed before you spoke to him. The thing that he just said. You could say that. The man's gaze does not waver from yours. I am known as Dakon. He emphasizes the place... He em the emphasis he places on the word no strikes you as odd, yet familiar at the same time. You are not known to me. Mm. Uh, go for one. I do not know myself. That is for the best. In knowing yourself, there would be little left in the plains worth knowing. He falls silent for a moment, still studying you with his coal black eyes. I would know why you have come to this city. I am looking for answers. I have many questions. Speak your questions. I will hear you. Your features are unfamiliar to me. What are you? A Githzerai. A Githzerai. A Githzerai is one of the people. One of the people? A Githzerai. Um, yes, but what are the Githzerai exactly? Dekon is silent a moment. Then he speaks. Our history does not need to be made known to you. We would bleed to death on time's blade before I recited a fraction of the histories of our people. I don't need to know your histories, but I would know of your people as they are now. Dakon is silent for a moment. Know this and accept it as an answer. We are the people who make our home on the shifting plane of Limbo. With a deft motion, Dakon slips the blade from his back and holds it up before him. Wait to see what happens. There, we mold the matter of limbo with our minds. We forge cities with our thoughts. As you watch, a series of rippling waves of metal begin to roll forth from the center of the blade. The pitch and the crest of the waves match the inflection in Dakon's voice. In its chaos we dwell, with only our knowing to preserve us. We are the Gith Zerai. What is that blade you have? It moved, shifted in response to your voice. It is a Karach blade. It is an object that lets others know the rank of its wielder. Karach, what does that mean? Dakon falls silent for a moment, as if searching for the correct words. In your tongue, the closest translation is chaos matter. 
the people may shape it with their thoughts. Shape it with their thoughts? Karak is not shaped by heat, but by knowing oneself. It is a mirror that reflects the will of the wielder on its surface and on its edge. When one knows themselves, the blade is strong, harder and stronger than steel. When one does not know themselves, the blade is as water, formless and weak. What blade does that, what rank does that blade signify? The blade is a symbol carried by the Zerth. A Zerth is one who knows the words of Zerthamon. In knowing the words of Zerthamon, they know themselves. Zerthamon? Zerthamon founded our race. He knew the Gitzerai before they knew themselves. He defined the people. He gave them one mind. Um, I had some other questions. Speak your questions. I will hear you. Uh, can you tell me about this city? It is known by the name Sigil. Among the people, it is known as the city does not know itself. It doesn't know itself. What do you mean? The city exists, but it does not know itself. In not knowing itself, its existence is flawed. How is it flawed? The city exists in opposition to itself. It has set itself apart from the plains, yet it seeks to be everywhere at once. Its walls are doors, yet it keeps those doors locked. Such an existence tells a thing that does not know itself. In not knowing itself, it is flawed. Let's see, we can do some philosophy with Dakon here. Uh, we're gonna pe speak one of the truths. Um, there's order and everything. Let's go with four. What if the city is not flawed and you just, just do not know the reasons for its contradictions? There is order in everything. Perhaps there is an underlying pattern that you cannot perceive. To your question, a question. What if the city is flawed and you see its contradictions all around you? We're going to go with the truth here. To your question, a question. You claim the city's existence is flawed. You have accepted this rather than explore the possibility that something greater may exist. That suggests you are flawed and that you do not search for knowledge but only for a convenient answer. This is what I do to my students in class, like all the time. Eat it, Dakon. Dakon falls silent. There is no knowing the answer to the question we have asked. Yet, the city exists. That is all. Yet, I would maintain that we know ourselves by the questions we ask and the ones we do not. If we cease asking questions and accept only what we can perceive, then we will cease to know ourselves. Dakon's voice has changed slightly, become heavier. Such words have been spoken before. I have heard them and know them. Where have you heard them? These words are mine. Once I knew them and knew their meaning. I had forgotten them until you spoke. Dakon's gaze travels through you and his blade stops shimmering. Bleeding of all color until it is translucent, there is a moment of silence. Then Dakon looks up at you. I would travel your path with you. Um, I accept. An extra blade would be welcome. Your path is mine. Strangely enough, his voice seemed distant, and it echoes as if he was speaking from across a great distance. Very well. Let's go. Yeah, follower gained. Now we have old Dakon here. Dakon is a fighter. Um, oh, we'll get to level people up later. 
we're currently only level four. There's lots of people we can talk to around here. Let's talk to, let's see if we can talk to Morde. Uh, dialogue. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's talk to some folks. Um, Morde, if you don't mind... I don't mind you tagging along, but is there anything else you can do except chatter? Hey, chattering's my best trait. He rattles his teeth for a moment, then grins. Eh? Eh? Oh, that's good to hear. Whoa, this music got weird. No, but seriously, Chief, I got an act for chattering in just the right way. I can really bend an ear, if you know what I'm saying. I got insults, backtalk, stuff that'll curl someone's ears into their skull, you know. Uh, how is that useful? It's one of my many talents. I call it my litany of curses. You see, sometimes I can really bend someone's ear with just the right comment. Of course, then I usually have to do a lot of running afterwards, but you get the idea. Uh, how does it work? Well, I can spit insults at someone until they get mad enough to chase me around. So, he's got a non-magical tone. That's how that works. Seriously, I don't remember this music. It's really bizarre. Uh, the Litany of Curses is very effective against mages, because they're very egotistical, I imagine. Hmm. Uh, I had some other questions. Um, let's see... I could use some advice. Uh, what should we do next? Well, here's how I see things. Go on. I think you should try and root out this ferret wherever he's set up kept. You wouldn't want to have one of those directions tattooed on your back if he didn't have some inkling of what was up with you. One of these locals around here has to know where he is. Good point. I had some other questions. Uh, Morte, how did you die? No idea, Chief. I kind of forgot when I died. Can't say I blame myself much. At least there was something waiting for me after I died, even if it is a life as a floating skull. I mean, I could have been worse. What happened to your body? Eh, I don't know, alright? It's just gone. Morde glares at you. But don't think I miss it, because I'm happy just the way I am. And I don't need your half-wit judgments or snide remarks, alright? Whatever. Let's go. Come on. Shake a leg. Morde glares at you. I'm not convinced you aren't some sort of walking curse that's destined to follow me around. Huh, look who's talking. Let's go. And let's talk to Dakon. What is your will? There are things I would know, Dakon. Um. Can I talk to you about your teachings? deck on weights. Um, so the art is magic. Um, can you teach me anything of weapon craft, Dakon? Dakon shakes his head. I cannot redirect one towards the craft of war, but I... Wait, I can redirect one on, towards the craft of war, but I cannot advance their skill. My weapons are not of steel but of will and knowing oneself. Very well. If I ever need to resume the fighter profession, I'll ask you. More questions? Um, I... Questions about the Githzerai. Um, I had some questions about Githzerai language. Deck on weights. Let's see. Can you teach me the ways in which your people speak? Know that the speech of the people has its foundation in history. All things are as a story to us. Metaphor is a tool and an inspiration to the strength. No, when we speak of Torig's table, we remember that Torig was noted for his hospitality and goodwill. When we speak of Selkant's heart, we recall the lecherous and cruel nation of Selkant. I understand. Will you teach me? Updated my journal. I learned some shit. <clears throat> Dakon teaches you some of the common forms of speech. 
a wise man is said to have wrote the book of the Anarchs, while to accuse another of treason is to remember Vilkar's eye. It is said of the generous people that their cupboards are bare. Common greetings include Hail Swordringer and Zeraki's kin bow to you, to which someone should respond, and the traveler is pleased. Dakon is a skilled teacher. After his instruction, you feel capable of exchanging proper greetings with other Githzerai. All right, some other questions. Um, talk about the blade. It's made out of a strange metal. It's almost hypnotic, the way it shifts back and forth. Okay. All right, um, I wanted to ask about our travels. Uh, no, let's move on. Let's, uh, let's talk to Drusilla here. This is a woman with fading bruises on her face and arms, and a look of despairing longing in her sunken eyes. She might have been pretty once, but those days were long ago. She turns slowly to face you. Life pours into her features, and the spark of a sardonic light that dances in her eyes now makes you wonder if your eyes were deceiving you. Welcome to the Smoldering Corpse Bar, scarred man. Um... Who is that burning by the entryway? Updated my journal. The despair you saw in her face before flits across it again like a black-winged shadow before she masters herself. That's Ignis, one of the greatest wizards ever to come out of this slummy excuse for a cesspool. They caught him, and they opened up a channel to the plane of flame through him, and now he's just a doorway for it, keeping himself alive by force of will alone. If someone could douse him for a few moments, it'd give him his life back again. But they don't make enough water to do that. Uh, what's your connection to him? Her voice practically throbs with a deep ache. Deep ache. I was Ignis' lover, and he, my beloved, he loved the flame more than me, and now he has become the flame. And because I love him, I love the flame. But that's all done with now. Now I wait for him to douse himself. I sell what little I have just so I can be near him. Very well. Answer some more questions. Blah, blah, blah. So, uh, we can interact with Ignis at a later time, but not now. What can you tell me about this place? Here? This is the smoldering corpse, though the person smoldering ain't dead yet. He's just keeping himself alive till someone comes along to help him out. Sods who like to see people in pain come here. Fiends like it. Folks who don't care much for being bothered come here too. The name alone keeps out most Burks. Good name for it. Farewell. Well, we'll deal with that later. Uh, let's talk to Ebb Creekness. You see a slightly stooped man with a full gray beard and a lion's mane of gray hair. He wears a couple of shoulder guards as armor, and he keeps a helmet nearby. He smokes a pipe and carries a pouch of tobacco around his waist. He looks pretty strong, but he's a little plump and also appears to have some sort of breathing trouble. Well, well, now aren't you a sight, f uh, a sight lad. Never have I seen so many scars blanking a fellow, like a scar cloak you're wearing. Where you been? Hanging out in a grain thresher? <laughs> oh, I'm just jesting with you, lad. No offense meant, and I hope none taken. I'm Ebb. He extends his hand. Greetings, Ebb. His handshake is firm. Now, I tender my apologies for the unfair jesting, lad. Hope no hard feelings. Can I buy you a tankard or two of something smooth, uh, something to smooth any ruffled feathers? Why not? That's the spirit, lad. Bide a moment. He raises to his feet and heads to the bar. After a moment, he returns to his seat with a pair of tankards. Here you go, lad. Drink up. He takes a massive swallow from his own tankard, puffs on his pipe, and says, What can old Ebb do for you on this fine sigil day? I had some questions about this place. Oh, well, that I gathered, just to look at you. 
I mean, you don't look like you're from around these parts, lad. You look a little too out of sorts to be a seasoned native. <laughs> so, what can I help you with, lad? Uh, you need to know the lay of the land. Eb winks. Uh, what are you doing? What am I doing? Peculiar question, lad. Does it look like I'm doing? I'm whittling away my time amongst pleasant surrounding, nursing a tankard of ale, set with a nice pouch of pipe weed and interesting company. Perfect way to spend one's day, I think. Eh? Eh? Eb claps you on the shoulder and laughs. Eh, eh. Indeed. I had some other questions. Hi, lad. What do you want to know? Do you know someone named Farid? Farid? Eb frowns. Take the pipe from his mouth. Now, lad, what do you be want with a burk like Farid? Hmm, I think he stole some of my belongings. Oh, no doubt, lad, no doubt. Ed grumbles, chewing his pipe. You have to chain up everything around that grasping little spider. He should have been one of the fated, the way not, the way anything not chained slips into his parlor. Don't give him a yard or he'll take a league, eh? Mm, what do you know about him? Well, now I don't know everything there is to know about old Farad, but I know some of the darts surrounding him. If you're determined to track down that spider and nail him to the wall, then I suppose I can spill some of the chance so you know what you're tangling with. He pauses to tamp his pipe. Barrett dug his nest deep into Ragpicker Square not too long ago. Got a bunch of collectors and gangs started uh, together and started what one could almost consider a collecting faction, be that as it may. Where can I find him? Well, lad, if you're looking for Farid, which I would say is pretty barmy of you, you're a little off the beaten path. You want to be finding Rag Picker's Square. Chant is that Farad set up his kip somewhere in the square. Even an old fellow like me who's been around a ring a few times don't know exactly where. I figure that Farad wants to keep the dark on his location dark. If you're all bound and determined to find Farad, go to Rag Picker's Square and try to dig up Farad's location from some of the locals. Try and be careful about it, since there's plenty in the square that would make a gut harp out of you as soon as look at you. Uh, all right, farewell. I can talk to all these people a lot later. I kind of want to get gone. some stuff happening. Mercy killers. Some demons. Some patrons. Done. Mochi. Are you coming at me, lady? What you want? You see someone dressed as a female dustman with a half-empty glass in her right hand. As you near her, she calls out to you. Um, you, over here. You notice that there's something wrong about her, and your exposure to the dustman leads you to believe that she's just too lively to be a real member of the faction. Approach her. Hey, Cutter, buy a lady a drink? You're not really a dustman, are you? She looks around nervously and seems to sober right, sober right up. Why, uh, why do you say that? Because you don't act like a Dusty, and you're not offering contracts. In fact, you're taking money instead of giving it out for that corpse labor they do at the mortuary. She stifles a squeak of terror and hastens to explain, No, 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 no. I'm not a Dustman. I found these robes in the street, and I didn't have enough money to get good clothes, and I, I heard that there was a Dustman thief around here. But you could probably find him somewhere else in the southwest part of the hive. I saw him, but I hid from him. Please don't hurt me. Mm, I'm not planning on it. You ought to know that you're not pulling it off too well. Now, answer some questions. Uh, what, what do you want to know? Mm, tell me about some of the other patrons here. I don't know. They're just um, people. I don't deal much with people, unless they're buying me a drink. She looks at you, hopefully. Uh, I can see why. Farewell. Whatever, lady. All right. Uh, we'll come back here at a later point in time. There's a lot of people to talk to here, a lot of stuff to do. But I kind of want to get on with some questiness. Some thugs. July. You see a thin man with stained clothes, a hooked nose, and two stubby horns jutting from his forehead. He is stumbling about and muttering to himself. He stinks of brine, vomit, and cheap wine. Greetings. Eh? The man squits, squints at you blearily. Was it? What? 
Never mind. Sorry to bother you. You drunk. Drunks and drunks. Hive thugs. Harlots. Hive thugs. Elise, what's going on? Yeah, we, we remember this already. I can stop them. I'll return when I've spoken to them. Greetings. Your sister wanted me to stop. I'm wondering why you're fighting. Anyway, I can help resolve. Your sister wanted me to stop the two of you. At least doesn't want to see either of you hurt. Apparently, there's not much I can do to them. Okay. We're gonna run in here. They're busy killing each other. I don't know exactly what I can do about that. Kuatra. Moving from box to box, this man seems to be totally immersed in counting boxes and scribbling results down on a piece of parchment. He looks annoyed as you interrupt him. What is it now? Can't you see I'm busy taking inventory? Go bother someone else. I didn't mean to interrupt. Farewell. Alright, well. This is obviously... Nothing helpful in here. <clears throat> so, uh, let's kill these thugs. Dagon, get him! He's just all whiffing entirely. So, yeah, I don't know exactly what I can do about that particular thing there. I feel like there's probably something I could have done. Ring, dirty rat jar, money. Done. Talk to this barrier. Much as this creature's body is a combination of man and ram, his head is a sort of mix of the broad, flat nose, goat's ears, and a pair of curling horns. Intricate designs are shaved into his dirty pelt, and a massive four-flanged polearm hands from his belt's harness. He doesn't seem to notice you. Greetings. He turns to face you with startling speed, his eyes dark and suspicious of you, his voice as deep and rumbling, not quite human and heavily accented. What do you want, two legs? His hand is close to his pole arms. Only looking to speak with you, I had some questions. He seems to calm down. His hands drop away from his weapon. He still keeps a certain distance from you, however. What do you wish to ask me? Um, why are you so wary of me? He seems sad for a moment. This place, a wretched, unclean place, is full of unfriendly, sometimes desperate people. Not the best place for a visiting barrier, two legs. He shrugs. I have business here, so, so I am here. 
business. What are you here for? Another time, two legs. If we ever meet in a happier place, I shall tell you about it. You said you were visiting. You don't live here. The barrier shakes his head. No, no, two legs. No barrier could li live in this. Where are you from? From the plains of Ysgard, two legs. They are my home. He smiles in fond recollection, as if warmed by the memory. That's all I needed to know. Farewell. Tell me your business. I must know everything. Let's harass this Gith Zurai townsperson with our new language knowledge. This Gith turns to face you as you approach. Like Dakon, he has a yellow cast to his skin and a gaunt frame. His clothing is a curious blend of sharp colors and dull, mud-stained browns. The Gith's dead black eyes flick over to Dakon, then you. Um, we're going to say, Zirkai's kin bow to you. The Gith, it, Gith star ignores you and turns to Dakon instead. He speaks several clipped words in a strange, low tongue. If you understand the inflections correctly, he just said, All beholden, Zerth. Wait and listen to Dakon's reply. Dakon replies in the same tongue. The sentence structure is odd. You think, Dakon said, this one is numbered among the faithful. What is he saying, Dakon? The Githzerai Towns person turns as you speak, then turns back to Dakon and speaks again, this time at great length. Try and translate. You have difficulty deciphering the sentence structure, but you think he said, there is one by Dakon's name who is not one of the people. It is said that his mind is divided. It is said that he is a Zerth that does not know the words of Zerthamon. Wait and listen to Dakon's reply. Dakon, Dakon makes the same reply as before. The tone has changed slightly, but the meaning seems to be intact. This one is numbered among the faithful. Dakon falls silent, as if to give the words time to sink in. The one besides me. Speak. Will you hear him? Listen. The Gith's response is so quick as it almost has the force of an attack behind it. You are not certain if you got the entire meaning of it, but it seems the Gith has just issued some sort of challenge to Dakon in the form of a question. <clears throat> Zerth, do you obey the words of this human? Wait and see what Dakon says. Dakon's reply is a short one but his speech is slowed, as if he has to drag the words from his throat. T'Cha's choice has become mine. Listen. The Gith falls silent for a time. This matter carries the stink of the illithid about it. His eyes flicker across Dakon's face. Face, I see no chains upon you. You speak your mind. How did this blasphemy come to be? Dakon speaks slowly again. The chains are my own. His skin seems to take on an ashen shade as he speaks. It sounds like every word is slowly killing him. Anarch of a hundred years, there is no hourglass that can measure the tale. The matter is as twisted as Frihi's roots. Its resolution is one of impossibility and may never come. Dakon frowns, then his voice strengthens. The one beside me speaks. Will you hear him? The gift does not look at you. His attention is focused on Dakon. He may speak. I will hear him. Dakon turns to you. He will hear you. If you could ask him... Your words are known to me, the Githzara interrupts. Face me and speak your mind. I will hear you. Very well, I had some questions. Actually drowning. Try and recall the translation. Akkali drowning. Essentially, a question whose answer would serve no purpose. This is usually a request of the speaker to make a vague or useless question more specific. Um, the Gifts are I make their home in the outer plane of limbo, a plane of chaos. Stability can only be achieved by shaping the chaotic matter, matter of the plane with the mind. Focus and discipline are necessary for this to occur. Achali is a foolish Githzerai of myth who was lost in limbo, and she was barely able to form an island around herself. While adrift in the chaos matter, she met a plane walker who offered her help. 
Achille asked so many useless and unconfused questions on how to return home, however, that the Isle of Matter dissolved around her and she drowned in limbo. Let me be more specific. Can you tell me where I might find... Oh, wait. Click for more. So, tell me where I might find work. There is little work here. You can hunt rats for bounties. You can gather the dead. Blah, blah, blah. Alright. Can you tell me about Dakon? He walks with you. His forehead creases. How it is he is not... How is it he is not known to you? I was helping... I was hoping you could tell me something about him. He is not speechless. If you would know him, put the questions to him. Do not insult us both by treating one as a statue. Um... Can you tell me something of interest? You are not known to me. Alright, this is not helpful. Get lost. So, he had an interesting interaction uh, Dakon did with his other gif. So, let's see if we can talk to him now about... Oops. Why that happened. What is your will? There are things I would know, Dakon. Um, no, this is not helpful. Alright, so... back here. I'm gone. Is there a map? There's a map. Maybe I could gut a dusty. Oh, we did um do the thing with the right. barking dogs. Uh, I've never seen I'm gone. so ugly of not that a crutch would be telling his copper about now. Let's see. Talk to her. <clears throat> I found the starved dogs barking and penned three of them in the dead book. Updated my journal. The powers are not be not blind in their justice this day. The woman reaches into her spider-like hair and then draws forth a copper earring. Here you are, a pretty bit it should fetch. It is worth thirty-three coppers at least, I am sure. It belonged to one of me sisters. But she won't be needing it anymore. Very well, goodbye. I couldn't carry anymore, so I had to drop. Yeah, went up a level, but I dropped some stuff on the ground. I thought someone leveled up. confused. Right, fine. Maybe it's just the XP noise. Uh, here's, this is in uh, Dakon's inventory. The unbroken circle of Xerthamon. This small round stone is the unbroken circle of Xerthamon. The unbroken circle is a Xerth religious text containing teachings of Xerthamon, the founder of the Githzerai people. The circle is made up of a series of interlocking circles that fold out from one another, depending on which branch the reader wishes to follow in the path of the teachings. It is said that some Xerths spend years poring over the combinations of the plates, looking for new significance in the teachings. Dakon seems to use the text as a means of focusing his spellcasting ability, for he pours over the tablet occasionally, memorizing the words. Go talk to him. Um... Okay, we can't figure out how to unlock it, apparently. Um, so we could talk to Dakon about, nope, about becoming a mage. What is your will? There are things I would know. 
Talk about the teachings. Can you teach me anything of the art, Dakon? Know that I am not a teacher in this, but know that I may serve as a guide. You do not know how humans come to be versed in the art, but when you, re when you uh, learn the art, return and ask me again. So we have to become a mage teacher. We have to find a mage teacher first, so he can't do anything for us. Oh, wait. Now everyone. What's up? All together now. Oh, we found a portal. That's interesting. Let's go in here. This spectral figure materializes from the gloom of the passageway ahead and quickly moves to block your path. It floats before you, its once human features twisted in a mask of rage. Defilers, leave this place at once. Greetings. That's always what you say after someone tells you to get lost. You say, hello. Leave now. Its booming voice echoes down the hall. This place is forbidden to the living. Leave while you still can. Hey, wait a minute. I have some questions first. Seek your answers elsewhere. This place is a sanctuary for the dead. I shall not permit their slumber to be disturbed by the intrusion of yet another insolent mortal. Another? Someone has been here. If you must know, yes. There is another intruder who even now continues to violate the sanctity of these hallowed halls. The anger in the spirit's voice fades. He seems somewhat saddened by the admission. The souls of my brothers and sisters cry out for peace. Who is this other intruder? He is an evil coward who wields great power over the dead. He seeks something within these halls. What it might be or what, its purpose, what his purpose is in seeking it, I cannot say. Why don't you drive this intruder away? I cannot. The coward has sealed himself in with, within the inner chamber of the mausoleum. He has erected powerful wards that bar my entrance into the chamber. It is from there that he calls upon his dark arts to awaken my brethren and bends them to his evil will. Sounds to me like you need the help of one intruder to get rid of another. The spirit remains silent for several long moments. You can almost feel the weight of his lifeless gaze upon you. Yes, you might prevail where I have failed. If you will pledge to rid me of this blackguard, I shall grant you passage. What say you? I'll do it. Updated my journal. So be it. The spirit slowly begins to fade until only the echoing of its disembodied voice remains. But take heed. Tread lightly in these halls, lest you join the others in eternal rest. Maybe that means if I die here, I die for reals. All right, so we will go after this uh, in the next episode. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this. We picked up a new party member, Dakon, and hopefully his fighty maginess can help us out. Uh, we'll look at his spells before we go into combat and see what he can do. So please hit a thumbs up on this video, and if you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. As usual, if you're not going to do either of those things, well, I don't care what you do.